Welcome to the Status Update Show. We have a very, very good one for you today. And of course, Status Update Show, where we uh, report on status posts across social media, whatever's trending. We will be reporting on it. And today, we've got a really good show for you. Uh, special guest, Mr. Freeway, Rick Ross. Now, he's trended for years, first in the streets as one of the nation's most successful drug dealers, and now on the internet and across the nation as a spokesman for his nonprofit organization, Freeway Literacy, where he lectures about his life and mentorships with today's troubled youth. Freeway Rick Ross. Ricky Darnell Ross, better known as Freeway Rick Ross, a.k.a. Freeway Ricky, is one of those rare figures whose experience as a drug kingpin has led him to a life of rebuilding the community in which he once helped destroy. Freeway Rick Ross is a speaker who is life-changing and mind-blowing. Freeway Rick Ross is a realist, humorist, entrepreneur, humanitarian, philanthropist, and mentor. As part of what is agreed to be one of America's most controversial government conspiracies ever, the Iran-Contra affair, Mr. Freeway Ricky Ross's story of being used as a pawn and landing a life sentence in prison commands the attention of any audience. Mr. Ross delivers clear-cut, mind-blowing information. The real Rick Ross, Mr. Freeway Ricky Ross, is informing youth about the real world of drugs and gangs and how they will destroy the life of the dealer and the devastating impact it has on the community. He spreads the message of literacy, anti-drug, and anti-violence wherever he goes. Now, he has applied the passion that helped him build an empire, learn to read and write, and to help get his life term conviction overturned into helping the youth and mentoring. Ross has been given a second chance to uplift his community by giving back through mentoring and sharing his story on multiple platforms. His goal is to be an inspiration to all to achieve their greatest successes without following in his footsteps. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Freeway, Rick Ross. How you doing, I'm brother? It's good, a pleasure. I'm good. It's a real big Thank pleasure, you. man. Thank Heard you. about you for years. <laughs> Heard about you for years, man. And this is good. This is this is great. And uh -huh. this, this is truly a status update because you're doing some really, really uh, good things. It's amazing, uh, to the man. Uh, wow. You know, just uh, last Friday, I was at uh, East High School in uh, Columbus, Ohio. Okay. And, uh, we popped in. Uh, I think unannounced, the guy told me that it was already lined up. But anyway, when we got there, it was uh, a meeting going on with some young high school men. Wait, wait, wait. You, you popped in unannounced. Yeah. But he said it was already scheduled. The guy posed, yeah, the guy who took me there said it was already, you know, shout out to him too, my man, Sean Stevenson. He, 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 he's a good guy. And, okay, Sean uh, Stevenson. Mm -hmm. he, he did 20 years in prison as well. Okay. And he's been going around, you know, trying to say to kids. and. To him, getting me into that school right. was more important than not having it set up already. Got so, you. Got so we you. go there, and it's like six, eight police here, and they're talking to the kids, and, and they're really giving the kids some good information, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, from my stand, standpoint. That what he, they were telling the kids was valuable. But the kids wasn't hearing it. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't relate. You know, the kids relate to, like, well, man, if, 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 if I'm there and I reach for my wallet and y'all shoot me, you know, exactly. Kind of like what, what Reverend Jesse Jackson is saying. You know, they more interested in not being shot by the police when they unarmed, right? Than trying to be entrepreneurs and getting the information that the cops are giving them. Exactly. So it was like really a a, a, a rough situation. And then Sean came up, and the kids just like shut up. You know, like now do they know him? They knew him, you know. Okay. He, he's from they said he's from Columbus, Ohio. And then when he told them that, because uh, when I when I'm sitting there listening, I'm like, wow, I got to come up here and win these kids' attention, uh -huh. you know. First thing, because if you can't win the attention, you can't give them nothing. <coughs> so, uh, Sean got the attention, and when I came up, man, you could hear a, a pin drop, you know, on the floor, and it was it was just wonderful. After I spoke to him, uh, I only had like six books left, uh -huh. and uh, the kids were like. Man, I want one of them books. And one of the kids rushed in his pocket. He said, how much it costs? That's I said, what's up. I said, 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. He said, man, I only got $9. Mm -hmm. So um, I couldn't give one a book and not give him all the books. Right. So uh, the one kid said, well, man, let me just read a paragraph out the book. Nice. So nice. Uh, the principal was hesitant when we first went in. You mm -hmm. know, he, he, him, I saw him and Sean in the corner arguing about uh the value of us speaking, 
Mm -hmm. And they had even went as far as separating the kids in their little normal groups that they that they have them in. With each one has their own police officer mm -hmm. that sits there with them. But somehow uh, they they agreed to to let us come and say something. But uh, I'm walking out the door and the principal is, is following me now. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. man, I got I got to get you back here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, man, these kids want to read. <laughs> he That's said, a beautiful he thing. Said, he said, you guys got these kids want to read, and 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 it's just amazing how. Uh, when I thought back during my life, mm -hmm. I didn't want to read because I didn't care about Jack and Jill. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want to know what Jack and Jill was doing because at my house, wasn't no bread, right. wasn't no potatoes. Right. Now, you're from, you're from Oakland. I'm from L.A. From L.A. South Central Los Angeles. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Figueroa in uh, Manchester uh, really is the heart of South Central. Uh, it's where the gang started. The Crip started right, right in that area. Were you a Crip? No, I wasn't a Crip. You know, um, how you feel about that? Did you feel like you missed out on anything? I, I mean, at one time I wanted to be a Crip. Mm -hmm. You know, because that, that, that was the culture. That was the culture. When I was around ten, eleven, you know, man, I want to be a Crip. Mm -hmm. uh, but lucky for me, uh, when I was around twelve or thirteen, a guy came to the park and he had some tennis rackets and some balls, and he, boy, take this racket, and I fell in love with that racket and that ball. And, and so you're a tennis player also. Yeah, I played tennis during junior high school and high school, which was the time that uh, most of my friends got into gang banging. Uh, right now, I have two friends that I went to junior uh, elementary school with. Right. Both have life sentences without the possibility of parole for murder robberies. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I look at that kind of stuff, and, and I know that these are guys that I ran with. Right. You know, we walked home from school together, mm -hmm. you know, from school. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was very easy that I could have fell into those same traps, you know. Yeah, so you went from using from the tennis racket into a whole different racket. Yeah. Which yeah. was the drug game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went back to my neighborhood. Uh -huh. I went back to where I had came. And you, by, now you, you bypassed the whole gang lifestyle and you just leapfrogged it and went directly into into business. But I got old enough to make make a logical decision. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I was doing a little critical thinking, you mm -hmm. know, back then. And, uh, you know, and I sat down and I thought about the gangs and, and, and I was like, you know, I like the, the camaraderie, you know, the mm -hmm. togetherness. Mm -hmm. But I can't see myself fighting over a street or a color. Right. Or because this dude here is, is from that side of town. And I knew that dude. We, right. we went to elementary school together right, before right. he became blood or right. before he became crip. I knew him. Right. So now I got to cut him off. And me and him was cool. Right. So now I got to cut him off because. He's detrimental. He stay on that side of town, right? It's a lot and of I stay on that side of town, right. and, and and it's so bad that they even have. I have friends that a brother was a crip, mm -hmm. and the other brother was a blood. Mm -hmm. wow. I don't, I don't went over to their house, and and you know they got like standoffs in the house, you uh -huh. know, like you know one brother's friends like, and the other one sitting on the other side. I'm like, so when I was 19, I just couldn't see myself uh, partaking mm -hmm. in 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 that type of avenue, and and. In actuality, it, 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 it benefited me uh, when I started selling drugs. You see, the biggest fascination with the name Freeway Rick Ross is, it's the obvious, is that you became really, really, really huge. It's the, it's the glamorizi glamorizing, you know, of the lifestyle of, of the, uh, the, the high post. It you is. Know, drug uh, deal. But you know, also the mindset, too. Mm -hmm. uh, I find, you know, I do a lot of speaking at colleges. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these kids come up and tell me that they studied my format. Mm -hmm. and, and even before I knew what my format was, mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was. And they had already analyzed me. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's crazy now with all our modern technology that uh, people get a chance to analyze you before you even know them. And, and, and uh, you know, they get to make decisions. So, uh, and people wouldn't know because you're very, you, you know, you have a very calm, a very self-assured, very unassuming uh, presence. You know, I, I do, and um, and that's by habit, and, and that, that's that's a that's that, that, that's a beautiful thing. I work on that. I, I want to be calm. I want to be inviting. Mm -hmm. You know, I want people not to feel threatened by me, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. because I believe that's beneficial, mm -hmm. and I think that everybody uh, should should want that trait. You mm -hmm. know, when people feel like, hey, you know what, he could be my homeboy. Mm -hmm. We could be we could be cool. Mm -hmm. uh, what I found out. Uh, 
you know, while I was in prison studying, you know, I did a lot of studying when I was there. And and, and that's and that's one that let me let me set that up. Uh, you admitted, and what didn't happen until you got into prison that you you were not uh, able to read and write. I was illiterate. I was totally illiterate. Was totally I never illiterate. read a book. First book I ever read was Malcolm X. <laughs> That's, that's and then I didn't even know about a Malcolm X until I got to prison. You know, I didn't know about a Farrakhan, you know. I heard of the Muslims, you know, but that was a store my mom used to say, oh, don't go over to that old Muslim store. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. Because <laughs> my mom was Christian, so you uh -huh. know how they had that, that separation. Exactly. Another, another separation. You know, exactly. For us. Yes. Uh, yes. You know, don't mess with them Muslims, you know. They talking that crazy stuff. They believe that a man is God. And, right. You know, yeah, so. and the spaceship in the sky, the mothership <laughs> is going to come and rescue you, you know, and the, you're going to be eating bean pies the rest of your life. <laughs> and so my mom had us, you know, we don't even want to, you know, go to the store with what. So, uh, you know, when I got to prison, man, and, and uh, I read Malcolm X's books, the one him and Alex Haley did. I didn't know who Alex Haley was either, even though I watched Roots. But, right, right. You know, I didn't pay attention to who, who put it together. Um, I was just fascinated with the information that that I got from that book, and and uh, and Malcolm gave me ideas. Mm -hmm. You know, reading Malcolm's book gave me ideas and, and opened up my world. It, it's it's funny how um, we can be in prison on the streets. Exactly. You know, there's kids right now that's in these projects, and and they can find. Uh -huh. I mean, they just don't have a fence around them, but they still just go to this little area, right. you know, here to the store. That's it. Back up to the project. No, no broadening of their horizons none, whatsoever. None. Uh -huh. and, and nobody to, uh, uh, to open that gate and show them that door. They listen. It's a, it's a big world out there. Exactly. Beyond yeah. the project. Uh -huh. And I, I'm really excited that Reverend Justin Jackson put this program on today uh, that, that, that I'm here for. Uh, Name of the program is? Uh, yeah, I can't think of it right. I'll find out, and I'll, I'll, I'll post it on there. It'll, it'll, it'll pop up on the screen. Okay, like, like okay. right here. See, yeah. there it goes right there. But just listening to some of the, uh, you know, sitting in on some of the, uh, the meetings and, and discussions, uh, they're talking about going back to the community, mentoring. Uh, they talking about economics. You know, when I was in prison, I, I knew that the black problem was, it wasn't drugs. You know. It ain't necessarily gangs. Uh -huh. I mean, gangs are a problem, but that's not. See, see, if we're gonna, if we're gonna solve a problem, uh -huh. you know, it's like grass. You're gonna cut the, cut the top of the grass off. Right. And you know, it looks good for a couple of days, and then it grow right back. Exactly. Uh, we gotta go to the root. Uh -huh. You know, if you really wanna get rid of some grass, you know, you're gonna dig it up. You know, get all of the seeds out, and 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 and, and fix the dirt where it don't grow no more. Uh -huh. Well. That's the way we have to deal with all these other problems, and I believe that the root to to all of our problems right now is economics. Now, <coughs> um, you know, many people uh, watching are going to uh, saying, "Ask him about this, ask him about that." So let's let's. I want to I want to I want to just get the shallow stuff out of the way real quick. Whatever. I mean, I'm I'm here, I'm, I'm I'm yours right now. You got okay. me. I'm captured. Right. You got to capture. You got me captured. There you go. Now the shallow stuff is. Rapper Rick Ross, who has brought your name uh, international. Uh, well, I be was it, already I was already international. Right, but you know, I more mean, more on a mainstream, you he, know, he, regular he, level. He he right now what he does is for the people who wasn't uh, on the internet, mm -hmm. uh, wasn't watching you know Nightline, Dateline, and Sixty right, Minutes. Right. For those people, he's bringing the name to their attention. But in '96. I was the most talked about true person in true. the country. Uh, my story is what drove uh, 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 blacks to the internet for the first time in droves. Agreed. Uh, it was the first story ever published by a major newspaper on the internet. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, you know, it was already, and not. And you boasting uh, about you this stuff. I'm not saying that you know what I did was was should be glorified or anything like that. I'm just saying facts. Right. And 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 you know sometimes people get mad when I when I when I quote facts and and, and stuff. How can like you get that. mad at facts? <laughs> I don't know. But that's our problem with 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 us as people is that uh, we'll rather get some BS instead of getting facts. Even if you know Minister Farrakhan say the medicine might not taste good, 
but you still got to take it if you want to get well. Exactly. <laughs> now, that, 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 that's real. Now, um, staying on that for, for one more beat, uh, I'm sure you've been asked this question a million times. So ha what, was your, what was your take on this rapper, assuming your name, and, uh, and brand, pretty much. I didn't like it at first. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, I was hot with it. You what, know, do you, what, do you, what do you do? Where's your, what, where's your head at when you when you, when you I was in prison. It? Get out of here. I was still in prison, yeah. I was sitting in prison. I had about two years to go before, maybe three years, maybe a little more. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure the date that mm -hmm. it was that, that I first heard. Mm -hmm. But I had a few years to go, and, and I had been telling my younger son, whose mm -hmm. name is Rick Ross, mm -hmm. And he raps. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, if you're really serious about rapping, wow. you should really go for it. Right. It's your you name. Know? It's your name. And and they're going to come for you. Right. I told him, people are going to come for you mm -hmm. because I already knew how people was treating me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I knew how the rap industry treated me. So, you know, I was telling him that, and I kind of felt that not only did he take from me, but he also took from my son as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. because that was his to inherit. Mm -hmm. uh, Is there any kind of legality with that? I sued him. I, uh, we went through a, a, a long, like a four or five year lawsuit. I figured he would embrace you and, and, and try to make sure you were good with him using your name and brand. And uh, Well, you know, I talked to him about that. I, well, I, I tried to when I was in prison. We, we talked on the phone a couple times and uh, I, I told him I had some ideas that, that I thought would really, really uh, boost him mm -hmm. a, as an individual. Mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of these guys, they don't really understand marketing. I mean, right. they, they really depend on these record labels to, to really take care of everything for them. Uh, I mean, with the lawsuit, uh, they said they spent $1.5 million on a lawsuit. Fighting you? Fighting me. I mean, How silly is that? You, you, I'm sure you'd have been like, we're give we're me one point five and we're but good. No, 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 no. Listen at this here. Don't when you get up to... 200,000, you say, well, you know what? Let's go talk to Rick. Exactly. Let's go see how much he wants. Exactly. When you get up to 500,000, you don't start thinking that. Right. When you get up to 700, you don't start thinking. Eight? Right. A million? Right. A million, two? Right. You, know, you want some shifty shit. You, you don't start to say, well, you know what? Maybe we can get this guy a couple hundred grand. Exactly. You know, we know he's broke, you know, because mm -hmm. he, he done got on the radio and said, I'm down on my luck and, mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. So um, that's what he said about you? Yeah. He said, I sued him because I was down on my luck. He doesn't, you know. <coughs> Yeah, you know, some cats so, just don't... And it, he's totally... I mean, everything that, that, that took place with that was totally against the lifestyle that he said he's living. Right. Because in the gang culture, if you take on the big homie's name, mm -hmm. then you got to represent him. Exactly. You know, you got to make sure that... Like the guy who introduced me to drugs, I took care of that guy for nine or ten years. Mm -hmm. You know, uh he, he went because he he fell out on his luck, mm -hmm. but I made sure he had a place to live. I made sure he had a car. Mm -hmm. He was never gonna be on the street mm -hmm. hungry mm -hmm. uh, or none of that because I felt that it was my responsibility for the game that he gave me. Mm -hmm. Even though uh, put me in the drug business cost cost me a lot of heartache, but that's not what he did it for. Right. He did it to help me, mm -hmm. and I understand that. What and year I, What year did you go in to prison? Uh, eighty nine. And what year? What year did you start in the business? Uh, seventy nine. Into seventy nine, right? Okay. At 80. Okay. You were you, you were right there in the beginning. At the be How did you get your sentence overturned? Uh, the way they sentenced me is they 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 they, they did what they call three strikes, mm -hmm. career criminal, uh, and by me selling drugs all over the country, mm -hmm. once they caught me, mm -hmm. they just took me from state to state to state to state to state, and then once I got found guilty. I was like, well, you know what? It ain't no sense in keep fighting. I got to do some time. Right. Now, if you want your conviction, mm -hmm. I'll give you a conviction. Mm -hmm. But what I want you to do is run your time concurrent mm -hmm. with the time I already got. Right. And so they were willing to do that. Mm -hmm. And they just kept doing it, kept doing it, and I kept pleading guilty. Mm -hmm. Well, <coughs> once they were finished, I got out of prison, mm -hmm. and uh, Danilo Blandon, who was my supplier, called me and set me up. D Danilo Blandone, who was the drug dealer above you. Right. Who was, who was giving you the drugs. The drugs. Well, I buy my drugs from. Okay. He called me one day and he was like, man, uh, I'm in trouble. I was like, yeah. And he's like, I got 700 kilos that I got from some people. I got to get them their money. Mm -hmm. I was like, I ain't doing nothing. Mm -hmm. I don't sell drugs no more. Because mm -hmm. you were just out. 
I was just out. All right. And I, I, I kind of had a little game plan, you know. I was I was Sellies with uh, Michael Harris when they started Death Row Records. Mm -hmm. um, I saw uh, uh, some of the other guys who had been been doing some records, you know, uh, Puffy and, and a few other guys, Russell Simmons, you know, and and, and uh, I had been in the record business too. So I came up with a plan that, that, that I was going to put this big youth center together and, and uh, the whole emphasis was really going to be on bringing the youth in to find out who had the talent. Mm -hmm. And then once you find the talent, it would be my job to help them hone their talent. Right. Well, anyway, you're, you're doing A and R work. <laughs> to make a long story short, um, Danilo was working for the government. Mm -hmm. So for six months, he hounded me about introducing him to one of my young guys and, and, and whatnot. So when I made the introduction, boom, my, my, li my little young homie handed him a bag of money, and the cops came and, and, and arrested. They got me for aiding and abetting. Oh. Said that I made the introduction to two people knowing that they were going to do a drug deal. Oh. Uh, so I go to prison. Uh, they give me Wh the life. Where's, where's Danilo? Where's he at now? He's still on the street. Ain't that some bullshit? Well, he was working for the government. Right. You know, uh, they gave him a job. Okay, yeah. so you went in. That's fucked up. So you went in. Right. Back in. Back in. And that was the life sentence. That was that a life sentence. So what they did is they said that uh, they was going to career criminal me mm -hmm. because I pled guilty in all those other states. Right. Then you got 49 strikes. <laughs> yeah. Right. So basically what I did is I said, okay. I started studying the law and I'm starting to understand the law. And I said, well, you know, I've only been to jail one time in my life. Mm -hmm. Really. Mm -hmm. Even though I pled guilty in all these other places, mm -hmm. uh, none of those other places were ever, ever able to catch me, so they couldn't indict me and put me in jail. Right. So what I did is I said, well, I know that the people who made the law wasn't planning on a guy in one day becoming a career criminal, because I could commit all the crimes that they said that I committed, I could commit them in one day. Right. So <clears throat> what I did is I said, well, what this is that I've been doing is a continuous criminal spree. Mm -hmm. Meaning that I've never been brought to justice, mm -hmm. so you can't count each one of them as a strike. Mm -hmm. They're only one strike. Mm -hmm. All of them mm -hmm. together is just one strike. Right. Because the United States is a whole place. It's not just because the states are separated doesn't separate the country. Got you. We still in the United States, and it's still the United States that's charging me with this crime. Deep. So the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeal agreed with me and said, oh, no, a guy can't be a career criminal in, in, in <laughs> one criminal episode. Makes a lot of sense. You got you to gotta punish him. Let him out of jail. Then he has to commit the crime again. <laughs> right. Now he has two strikes. Right. And then he catches the third one. Well, that didn't happen to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I was only arrested. I, basically, I never got out of handcuffs. Mm -hmm. I was in handcuffs and just taken from state to state. Mm -hmm. And uh, they agreed with me, and, and that's how I'm here today. God bless you, man. That was brilliant. <laughs> that was brilliant. So um, now you're <coughs> traveling around and, uh, and doing speaking engagements. Loving lecture, it. Le lo loving, loving it. it. Lecture news, and it's gotten so uh, uh, so much attention, serious attention, that even uh, the headquarters at Facebook, yeah, one billion members, Facebook, they want to bring you into their headquarters and and speak to them. Well, you know what I, what I always try to do is I try to find a hole that that I can fit through, you know, and even with drugs, that's that's all I did in the drug business. I found a hole. Uh, uh, that was open. Uh, it had a void. Uh, people in LA who was using drugs, I mean, <laughs> like it or not, mm -hmm. they were using drugs and they wanted a good drug dealer. Mm -hmm. They wanted somebody that was going to have their drugs. They can mm -hmm. come over there. They wasn't going to get robbed. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he wasn't going to beat them out their money. Mm -hmm. They wanted that. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel that vile. And what I did in, 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 in this right here is I looked for a vow the same way. And, and one of the things that I found out is that. Uh, most of our celebrities, uh, they don't really like their fans. Mm -hmm. The only thing that they want from their fans is that money. That's it. And what I did is I said, you know what? I'm going to love my fans. Mm -hmm. I'm going to love them so much that whatever they want me to do, I'm going to do it for them. And, and what I found out is that they love to take pictures with us. Mm -hmm. and, and I try to take pictures with everybody. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I knew that that was going to start a trend because every time I take one of those pictures, they take the picture and put it on their Facebook, their Twitter, their Instagram. And, and Are you on Instagram? I'm on Instagram, too. Okay, okay. And, and some days, you know, people call and tell me, like, when I was in Columbus, Ohio, uh, 
I know a girl that's from Columbus, and she's in Atlanta, Georgia, and she mm -hmm. called me. She said, man, you're trending on everybody's Facebook page right now in Ohio. So uh, it, it, it just, you know, it just... Trending is a beautiful thing. That's what the Status Update Show is all about. <laughs> it's all about trending. So I want to cover one real thing because we're going to wrap this up um, because this is huge, and I don't, I don't think a lot of people understand the connection, but uh, you, you were a part of the Iran-Contra I was. Now, what, what, in, in real brief, what, what, was, what was that whole connection? Well, I was a street connection. I was the guy that they were well, the Iran-Contra thing was the exchange for drugs, for... Drugs, for weapons. For weapons. Well, it was really all about getting aid for the Contras. Okay. The bottom line it was, you know, the weapons was just a part of it, but the, the main part was that the Contras needed uh, backing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Congress had said... To Ronald Reagan and George Bush, you can't back these guys no more. They're they're, they're ruthless. Mm -hmm. They're criminals. Mm -hmm. Cut off the aid. Cut off the aid. So what uh, what they did is they found alternative ways to raise money. You know, they went over and so I ran weapons for money mm -hmm. to get that money, and then they turned around and gave the money to the Contras, and the Contras took that money and went and bought drugs. So how did you? So wh where was your fit? Well, I was the guy that they sold the drugs to. The government. Not, not the government per se. Uh, <coughs> Danilo Blandon couldn't be a CIA agent. Right. They have to be what they call operatives. Right. Meaning that they can get money from the government, but they can't be employed by the government. I mean, I, I, I look at it as the same. So Danilo got money from the government to buy his cache of drugs, and he trickled it down to you for the, to get Correct. this. To, for, so you disperse it on the streets. Correct. Now he didn't say that the government gave him the money to no, buy but drugs. The drug. He's the one that found it all out and put all the pieces together. Oh, okay, got you, got you. No, he wasn't the one who facilitated. Blandon is the facilitator. Got you. Uh, Gary was a reporter who who got in touch with me from the San Jose Mercury News and told me that he was investigating this big big thing with my drug supplier, and when it all came out, it was the, the Iran Contra affair. Got you. So, uh, and now we have. Your book, best selling, <laughs> best selling book, Freeway Rick Ross by Rick Ross with Kathy Scott, and it's an untold autobiography, and uh, it's available on Rick Ross Books, Amazon, Kindle, Nook. Um, it's, it's it's all over the place now. Bookstores are starting to buy it, and I'm self published too. So beautiful when you uh, when you buy that book, you're helping small uh -huh. Freeway Rick Ross, ladies and gentlemen. Um, well, that concludes our. Our interview for the Status Update Show with Rick Ross.